Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, YouTube. What's going on? It's your boy Joey Does Tech, and welcome yourselves back to a brand new video. I purchased an Xbox One on eBay for £37.95. I'm already looking at this Xbox One and thinking, oh dear, I'll see if I could chuck up a picture on eBay, but that doesn't, that wasn't like as it was listed, but it was for parts, so it's basically a big stuff you. But Joey, what's the issue with the Xbox One you might be asking? It doesn't actually display to a TV. Recently, I didn't sell an Xbox One because of the state of the inside of the console. This one isn't too bad on the outside. It's a little bit scratched up. That's fine. As long as the insides are okay, we should be good. Pending, I can actually fix the console. The listing states that it does turn on, it does work, you can hear sounds, etc. but it just doesn't display to the TV. Two things spring into mind straight away, the HDMI port, or I hear a lot of people talk about the encoder chip. Now, I don't know if the encoder chip exists on an Xbox One. I think it's more PlayStation, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and bet on the fact that it does exist in an Xbox One as well. Could be wrong. I'm gonna spend some time on Google, YouTube, you name it, and hopefully I'm gonna be able to fix this Xbox One. If not, add it to the spares and repairs. Let's head on over to the desk and see what lies beneath this console shell. So as you can see, I've got the Xbox plugged in down here. I've also got it hooked up to a monitor. I just need to make sure that the Xbox actually turns on. This is a known good power supply that I've got down here that works for my normal Xbox One. So let's find out a moment of the truth. Okay. So it, it turns on down the bottom. There was no on button noise. And like the description said, there's nothing on the monitor and there's no eject button noise. So again, I'm gonna turn this off. I guess I'll hold it down and see if that works as well. Which it does, but there's no off button noise. Let's get this apart and see what's going on. The first thing I'm gonna do is light my Zen candle because I feel like we're gonna be in for a rough ride with this Xbox One. I can't confirm what the scent is, by the way, because it doesn't tell me, it just says scented. As you can see, whoever took this apart didn't put it back together correctly. I'm gonna slowly take it apart and see what is good. So we're gonna start by just removing this grill. Nice and easy, nice and simple. And look, they've just not put it back. Look, you can see how easy it, look, that's, that's been like put back on. Okay, wicked. So now what I'm gonna do is just slowly take the front off because as you know, it's in an absolute state, but something is rattling. Let's put it flat. I've still got the sink button in, which is not good. I'm gonna slowly and carefully lift it up and see what's good and what's not. Okay, so that is still intact, the front bit. I might be able to show you a little bit of this. So you can see that we've got the ribbon cable here. See that? What I'm gonna do, is lift up the blue so it's loose. I'm going to push out the tabs and then you sh the ribbon cable should just come loose. Okay, so the sync button itself is snapped. See how it's snapped here? So the ribbon cable is still, <laughs> the ribbon cable part is still attached. I don't know if we can actually just put that back as normal to be honest. Maybe I, think, maybe I can get some glue because all that is is a button really. So maybe I can just get, get some glue and tie that and put that back on. I've only just spotted what's wrong. <laughs> it's quite obvious. So, there's a couple of things wrong with this. The disk drive is kaput completely because the whole metal chassis has been bent. So that's not great. Secondly, I've identified why the noises weren't working. It's because this is completely snapped from the front board here. So that's why the sounds aren't working. Is there a rattling inside? You guys can hit. Oh, that's what's rattling. And that is a clip for the front of the Xbox. So if I just unclip this quickly to show you, right? I think this is meant to have around about one, two, how many, one, two, three, four. So it's meant to have another three additional clips here to secure this at the front, which have just been completely snapped off. I don't know where the others are. The actual condition like dust wise isn't horrendous. I've seen a lot worse in the, in the three or four Xboxes I've done. I'm gonna take out all the screws and I'm gonna pop the hood and see what we've got underneath. Just for the record, I think these are T10 screws. just bend that back 
into a little bit of what it was. As always, I think this is gonna need a really quick dust down. So I'll be back in a second. I've got the Xbox plugged in again um, with power, etc. But I've also just taken apart another Xbox, my spares and repairs one, and uh, I've taken the noise stuff from it, which is which is kind of cool. I'm gonna see if this little thing still works. It took a little bit of a beating at the front of the board, so I'm just gonna see if this works at all. So what do we get? Do we get some noises? Let's find out. Yeah, okay, wicked. What happens when we hit the eject? Okay, so that tells us there's no, there's no game in there. Okay, so at least I can use that part from the spares and repairs Xbox that I've got, that's wicked. I've got HDMI plugged in, I can confirm there's still nothing displaying on the screen. I'm just wondering, could that be a hard drive fault? I'm gonna take out this hard drive and I'm gonna put the hard drive that I know that works from this spares and repairs Xbox in and see if that makes a difference. I don't think it will, but it's worth a test. This is the one that I'm swapping. This is 500 gig as well. The other one was WD Blue, this is Seagate. Let's see if that makes any difference, shall we? I do not believe it. So this one is the hard drive that was in the console we're trying to fix. So obviously I took that out and I took the Seagate hard drive that was in my spares and repairs one. You guys might remember this one from, uh, from an old video. And I've put that into this one and now we get that something went wrong. So what I'm gonna try and do is completely reformat the drive and see if that works. Just for the record, I'm trying to pair up the controller and it's not working. So I've got this, it's flashing. And then if I hold down the sync button, I get like a weird popping noise, can you hear that? So I'm holding it down, but it's not flashing or anything. The Xbox light doesn't change down here. It just stays like, a, it just stays a solid white no matter how many times I press it. I don't know if that's because I don't get past a certain stage with the Xbox, I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna try USB with micro USB to the controller and see if that syncs it. And then we can figure that one out after. Okay, so we've gone back to the shaky old phone again. So I'm gonna go troubleshoot. And I'm going to go reset this Xbox to restore factory defaults. Remove everything is what the option we're going to go for. And let it do its thing. And I'll update you in a second after it's restarted and uh, see how far we get. All right, so even after factory reset. And so editing Joey's had to come in here and step in for what sounds like drunk Joey. I tried to restart and it still came up with the same thing. It got to about four or 5% and then it's come up with system error E106. I've read a few things online and I think what we're gonna have to do is plug a USB memory stick into my PC and download the original software from the Xbox One website. We can then plug in the USB to the Xbox One and install the update offline. Let's see if that works. To do this was pretty simple. I typed in the Xbox error code into Google and clicked the top link. This then took me to a page that I had to click another link. Then I simply scrolled down to my error code and downloaded the system update file, also known as OSU1. My USB drive was actually formatted already to FAT32, so I had to reformat it to NTFS. Really simple to do, but you will lose any data that you already have on the stick. I then extracted the files onto the USB drive, ready so that I can put the USB drive into my Xbox One. Bob's my uncle. Yeah, I found out why the sync wasn't working and it was because I didn't have the antenna card in, which obviously makes sense. So what I'm gonna do now is just plug the USB in this side. I'm gonna turn the Xbox on, which I think I can now do on my controller. Yes, I can. And then hopefully it turns on and we can boot from the USB. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So you're gonna to have to go down to troubleshoot, then offline system update, click on that, and the console should start updating from the USB flash drive. So this is looking good so far. It's installing the update. It's gone up to 6%, which is higher than what it was before. I think the trouble comes when it applies the update though. I think that's just based on watching a few other videos. So we'll see how this goes. So the Xbox just restarted and now we're on a slightly different screen, but it says that it's applying the update now. So this is good so far. Okay, the update's finished. I'm just gonna press the Xbox button now and do a quick setup and just see if we can uh, maybe play some games or something, I don't know. I've just connected to the internet uh, via Wi-Fi, and it's just doing a few more updates now. All right, and here we have it, we're in. Let's see if FIFA works. This disk drive was completely screwed over by the indentations on the metal case, and there we go. Regardless of how battered the case is, it works. Now I'm just gonna install it and um, test it a bit. Let's update, and I'll be back in a few. Perfect, this is how I know this Xbox works correctly, because I just played a Southampton, I beat Portsmouth 4-0. So we'll just quickly do a little bit of a recap as to how we got on with this Xbox. So. As you remember at the start, this was all out of place. The sync button was faulty. What I've managed to do is replace the whole front shield from the other Xbox that I had. So just to ensure that, hello, just to ensure that this fits correctly and uh, and I don't wanna be messing around with the sync button too much. So what I'll probably end up doing is with the old sync button that was hanging off, I'll probably glue that and just double check that it still works okay. And then I can use that potentially for another Xbox. 
So this is the faulty hard drive. What I did notice when I took apart the other Xbox is that this was slightly bent up, so I don't actually know if there's some bent pins or something here which was causing the Xbox not to show an image. Now that is something I've not personally heard of before. It might be quite a common issue with the Xbox One. This Xbox wasn't displaying an image on the TV because of a faulty hard drive. I probably shouldn't tap that too hard. I think if you press on this too hard, it can actually ruin it. But I think this one's ruined anyway. I need to pick up a little external two and a half inch hard drive connector that I can hook up to my PC and run some diagnosis to see if this is completely faulty or not. I imagine so because it just wasn't displaying anything on the TV, but who knew that that would fix the fault? Then we also have the little story of this speaker, which is for the eject, the sync, and also turning the Xbox One on. It's responsible for the sound of those buttons. The black wire is cut in half. I, I, I think I can just solder this back together and it will be good as new. So I will keep hold of this part because if that's the only thing wrong with it, that should be a relatively quick fix. So these are the two parts that we actually replaced in this video. I'm so, I'm so glad that just by taking out the hard drive and swapping it and trying that first, just by trial and error, it actually resolved the issue. We obviously gave it a little bit of a test with FIFA 20 and it seems to work fine. I spent about half an hour on the game. I might spend a little bit more time on it before I end up selling it just to make sure it doesn't overheat or anything like that. But it's actually also relatively clean inside this Xbox One. Wi-Fi works, controller sync works as well as shown. The reason behind that is because I forgot to plug the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna back in. It wasn't picking up the signal from my controller. I will just quickly write faulty on this just so I know going forward. I'm gonna stick that back in the other Xbox that I've got for spares and repairs. Just goes to show as well, I picked up another Xbox that was pretty much dead completely. We managed to restore the life back into it, but the insides of it, I don't know how long it was gonna last for. So I kept that one just on a whim and thought, if I get something else, I can just replace the parts. And it just goes to show, like I've taken two parts from it, the hard drive and the little speaker, and now I've got a fully working Xbox One that I can sell on, so that's a result in my eyes. If the hard drive didn't work in this machine, my next step would have been to remove all of the components completely and start to have a look at the board itself to see if there was anything, if there was like any corrosion or anything like that around certain chips or caps, etc. But luckily, this Xbox One has been fixed and revived by replacing the hard drive. They're not always that simple. <laughs> well, I can't believe that that fix worked. I dare to say it, but I think I've actually been pretty lucky with Xbox Ones. In total, I paid £38 for this Xbox One. And the last Xbox One that I managed to fix and I put up on eBay, I managed to sell for £70 plus, I think like £6 postage. So we'll call it £76. If I can sell this Xbox One for the same price, I make a profit of £38. Let's call it £40. I actually sold pretty quick last time at £70 as well, so I might put it to 80 In terms of parts, I used the front panel of the Xbox and I also used a hard drive and I also used the speaker that does the sounds for turning on disc ejection, etc, etc. If I had to buy those parts, then we're talking not much profit because I'm pretty sure a 500 gig hard drive you could, has around about £15 or so. I paid around about £10 for the front panel for the previous one, so you're talking £25. And then God knows how much the actual speaker thing would be. Let's call it another 10 So that, that's £35 in parts down the drain. But luckily, because I've got an Xbox that I don't want to sell and I'm just using for spares and repairs, then it cost me nothing. And we definitely call that a win. I hope you enjoyed it. I really did. Again, I got ridiculously lucky, so why wouldn't I enjoy it? And if you did like it, make sure you drop a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you're new around here, and there should be a little notification bell next to the subscribe button as well. If you don't want to miss an upload from myself, make sure the notifications are turned to on. It's been your boy JDT, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.